I'm going to go on my own personal little rant here. So, as you may have gathered from the title of this video, it's very obvious that this video is going to be about why we don't rip off our neighbor, or anyone really. But this is something that has kind of bothered me ever since I was a little girl. But I notice it a lot in the mainstream world, but also in the farming world, I've noticed it quite a bit. We've been really blessed and really lucky to have surrounded ourselves with some really awesome, great people with amazing morals and ethics and an awesome community that looks out for each other and is supportive. But I will say there's definitely some bad apples out there, not just around us, but just in the farming community in general. And I just wanted to, I guess, talk about like why we don't rip off our neighbor. So it might be a little bit tempting, especially if you are in a bit of a desperate situation or you really need money or something like that to rip someone off or not tell someone all the details or kind of tell half truths about something. So I'm going to give some examples that these are kind of examples that I have experienced in my own personal life, but I'm sure others have as well. So First example is when you go to buy a horse and it's advertised and you get there and it's something that was not advertised or you get it home and you realize it's a completely different animal than what you thought it was. For example, um, I see it quite often, people advertising kids' horses and it's really unfortunate because someone that's inexperienced who might not know better or just didn't have the opportunity to put the horse through all of its paces, they might get taken advantage of, or they might not ask all the questions that they should ask, or do all the things that you should do to do your due diligence before bringing that horse home. And it's really unfortunate that people are willing to just let it go like that, get their money and move on and, and not have any accountability for that. I find that really sad that they would knowingly withhold details about a horse um, like say for example it's a bucker if you haven't warmed it up enough at a lope or whatever they might have some kind of vice that could be actually really quite dangerous or it could just be a vice that to someone that's experienced is not a big deal but to someone that doesn't know how to handle that or how to remedy that it might be a, a much bigger problem or become a bigger problem in the future and I just don't understand why people are not honest because for me i would absolutely hate if my reputation was being known as someone that was there to make like a quick buck off anyone um yeah so i just don't understand why people think that's okay to do that dishonest sellers and stuff i don't i just don't get it it doesn't do anyone a favor. You're potentially putting someone in harm's way, especially children in harm's way. And that's just uh, one example that I've noticed. Another thing is, you know, like breeding animals just to make a quick buck, you know, breed whatever to whatever to try and sell whatever it may be, puppies, mediocre horses, crappy cows, whatever it may be, just to try and make a quick buck. Because if you are actually in that game for the long term and you're trying to better your breed of choice whether it be whatever species of animal you're into or you're doing all the proper testing vaccinating deworming health checks health testing blah 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 the list goes on if you're actually being a responsible and ethical breeder you would know that you don't make a lot of money off those animals what you're trying to do is create something that is useful for the application it's intended for. So for example, a livestock guardian dog is supposed to be a working dog to protect your stock. And every day I see people selling a Great Pyrenees crossed with a Blue Heeler or a Maremma crossed with whatever, a Newfoundland, St. Bernard, Catahoula Leopard Dog. I don't know. There's just so many silly crosses out there and people don't really give a crap what happens to those puppies after they've gone to new homes. They get their money out of them and then they... That's it. Whatever happens next, they don't care. If they have health problems down the line, if they have behavioral issues, serious behavioral issues down the line, they don't care. They have no accountability. 
no responsibility for what happens to those puppies after they leave their possession. And I don't agree with that because, well, I just think it's dishonest and it's not very responsible. Some more examples I thought of was maybe knowingly selling someone a dairy cow that they intend to use as their family milk cow that's a kicker or that has serious issues with mastitis or has a staph infection that they can't get rid of or whatever or selling someone cattle that are knowingly fence crawlers or just something that is extremely irritating, extremely annoying, possibly very dangerous and withholding information like that. But regardless, those are just some examples and I'm sure there's hundreds and hundreds of more. If you guys have some examples of people ripping you off or selling you something that wasn't advertised fully, definitely drop them in the comments below. I'm interested to hear what's uh, going on out there. I'm sure there's a whole whack load of stories and I'm sure I'm not the first to, to notice things like this. But one point I wanna make really clear in this video is that the reason why I don't believe that it's okay to rip off your neighbor or anyone really is because for one, it gives you a really crappy reputation um, I don't want my name attached to being a bad seller or dishonest or any of those negative connotations towards my farm. And secondly, those are going to be the people that are going to bail you out in a time of need. If you're in an emergency situation, those are going to be the people that are going to be there and help you and support you and encourage you and get you out of a tough spot. So if you're screwing those people over they're gonna be probably a lot less inclined to help you in the future. If you're familiar with where we live in Northern Alberta, or if you've heard about it on the news, which I'm sure you probably have by now, we've had a really awful wildfire season so far. Thankfully, we recently got some rain, but there's been a lot of evacuation alerts and evacuation orders where people have had to get out fast, get livestock out fast, and find somewhere else to house them with very little notice. So that is just a really good example and a really good reminder of who's going to be there for you in your time of need. It's most likely going to be your neighbor or someone in the same industry as you. So if you've screwed people over, they're probably going to be less likely to help you in a situation like that. And that is a situation where you have absolutely no control over it. So yeah, just a good reminder that you're going to need someone in your corner when shit hits the fan. 